His Excellency Ambassador Khalid Galal Abdul Hamid, thank you for the honor of joining us at the Academy for Cultural Diplomacy here in Berlin. Uh, we would like to ask you a series of questions in order to hear your thoughts and opinions on some salient issues. So, question number one is on Ukraine and Russia. What is your opinion on the current situation in Ukraine? Um, do you see the current situation in Ukraine as war between the West and Russia? And what is your advice to the heads of Western countries in, in this regard? And last one, this is a fact question. Uh, what is your advice to the Ukrainian president? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> Cultural diplomacy. <laughs> The situation uh, we all see uh, on, on the news every day, and it's a situation whereby there is definitely a lot of um, human suffering, like in every war. And most importantly, it's a situation where we do not see an end. The current fact is that Russia cannot be allowed to win and Russia cannot be allowed to lose. And this is really the, the problem and the fix that the world is in. Um, Russia winning means that um, there is going to be a, a change in uh, Europe through uh, 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 military action, which uh, many European countries will not accept and the international community has declared itself against. And at the same time, Russia losing can open up um, a tremendous Pandora's box when it comes to possible Russian reactions to that uh, loss in uh, the field. And so um, we are at a quite an un untenable situation. How do we uh, deal with this war and how do we try to end it? And um, I think um, it is clear and also clear from the discussion we had earlier uh, this afternoon that um, this war is affecting everyone at varying degrees, but it's affecting the most vulnerable and um, the South, the countries of the South and the people of the South perhaps the most. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the next question I'd like to ask is about Egypt and the Arab Spring. In the last 50 years, we've seen all sorts of interferences, you could say, active or passive, uh, of the West in diverse countries that have ended up with horror and destruction. Actions such as interfering and risking the existence of regimes around the world, even if they are not protecting or maintaining basic human rights, uh, as in the West, may risk ending with terrible results. Only in 2021, we have seen the collapse of Afghanistan and a revolution in Myanmar. The Arab Spring, which was enabled by the fall of the regime of President Mubarak, brought horrors never to be seen before to the entire region and the creation of an ISIS state. The 1979 revolution in Iran that was enabled also because of lack of support of the Carter administration to the Shah has ended up with a dictatorship that for over 40 years has disrupted the entire region of the Middle East, starting with the Iran-Iraq war and the long war in Yemen. In between, the regime helped to establish and provide support to extremist movements such as Hezbollah and Hamas, uh, and have developed the Iranian atomic plan. So my question is, again, uh, feel free to ignore or answer as you like, but do you have criticism for the Obama administration, of whom I was a huge supporter of? Uh, was the Arab Spring a success? Or was it a failure? What are the achievements? What's your opinion went wrong with the Arab Spring? So many questions. But... Perhaps too many questions. <laughs> um, um... Well, I'm not an American citizen, so I would not uh, uh, <laughs> declare my, uh, myself on the Obama administration. But what I can do is I can critique their foreign policy. And what the Obama administration has done, they have gone from uh, an engagement with the Middle East. Remember the Obama speech, very famous Obama yeah. speech in Cairo University. Raising the expectations. Yeah. Raising very, very high expectations. Yeah as to how they were going to engage with the Arab world, how they were going to engage uh, with the Middle East. And then we ended up with a pivot toward the East. And um, it seems that um, it was a self-declaration of failure that um, they, the administration was unable to, to deal with the uh, with, um, situation as it is on the ground. Uh, it was perhaps too big a, um, 
a mouthful to chew. Mm -hmm. And um, we've seen that uh, all the events that unfolded during the, the Obama uh, years, um, we are still trying to resolve today. Mm -hmm. Could the reactions have been different? I, I would imagine they could have been different. Um, the uh, rise of uh, the Islamic, um, political Islam, mm. uh, in, um, in Egypt to start with, I'm not sure about ISIS because um, uh, ISIS uh, was, was more toward um, Syria and, and, and Iraq. Mm. But um, the experience that Egypt has had uh, with uh, the Muslim brothers um, and the fact that um, because of the lack of understanding, mm -hmm. uh, religious dictatorship was enabled to rule in the most populous Arab world uh, is, uh, is a grave mistake. Mm -hmm. And I think Partially what we are seeing uh, unfolding in the region today is because of that um, misconception that there could be um, a religious um, uh, state mm -hmm. that would um, upkeep the uh, principles of uh, democracy and human rights and, 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 and free uh, societies. I think, I think this is where the, uh, the major misunderstanding was and I hope after everything that this region has gone through, mm -hmm. it is now understood that um, it is not to be tried uh, again. Because this, um, you know, we were talking about professors and, 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 and how um, they come from different backgrounds and, and, and different um, walks of life. But um, we are dealing with real people, we're dealing with big countries, we're dealing with old countries, with very, uh, uh, with very old civilizations mm -hmm. and cultures. And so bring the best professor from Stanford or Harvard mm -hmm. um, who have never set foot in those countries mm -hmm. and um, they invariably will not have the right answer. <laughs> no, very often the, the local wisdom is wiser, uh, much wiser than the global wisdom in many cases. I'd love to ask a question also about culture diplomacy, uh, in terms of also the importance of culture diplomacy. I remember when uh, President Steinmeier was foreign minister in Germany, uh, and there's three pillars in the German foreign ministry, culture, and politics, and economics. And Foreign Minister Steinmeier at the time increased the culture and communication budget, so it was actually greater than that of politics and economics, one of the few countries in the world. My own country in the USA, really since the end of the Cold War, decline, 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 less and less culture diplomacy at a time when I think the world needs it even more. So my question is for Egypt, a country which is blessed with such an amazing cultural heritage and history, etc. Uh, what significance does cultural diplomacy within the foreign policy? And maybe you could give one or two examples uh, of, let's say, a successful or exciting ex example of cultural diplomacy from Egypt, either in Germany or, or in other places. I would refer you to the bust of Nefertiti, who is our best uh, ambassador yeah. here in Berlin. I hope uh, you have seen it. I hope in others uh, 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 in this uh, in this room have seen it. Um, despite of the fact that it is here in a in a German museum, but it is very much an Egyptian. Uh, the second ambassador of Egypt. Uh, yeah. Actually, the first. Uh, <laughs> so she um, she is a, a beauty uh, and a queen, so she comes first. Okay. Okay. Um, but my point is that, as you say, because of of, of all this. Uh, very rich uh, heritage. Um, we are lucky uh, that um, sometimes people do this for us. As you know, last week uh, there was the celebration of uh, 100 years of the discovery of Tutankhamun, the Howard Carter's uh, famous discovery in the uh, Valley of the Kings. And uh, it's again one of the major uh, flags that uh, we are, uh, we are uh, flying in terms of our communication and cultural diplomacy around here in Germany. And so uh, when it comes to, to us now, what we are trying to do, we are trying to, to showcase all of this. But we are trying to showcase all of this not in terms just of its, of its artistic value or cultural value, but also in terms of its, the need for the um, economic uh, uh, gains of tourism. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Germany is uh, providing <coughs> us with about 1.6, 1.7 million tourists annually, and we would like to see that number double because, as you know, tourism is one of our major um, uh, foreign cash uh, 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 sources, and so and so we would like to uh, do as as much um, of that as as possible. Um, we are also trying to do. Um, the exchanges I had been talking about uh, earlier, and, and so um, we try to, to show of, of what is not known of us as, as much as possible. So um, I am planning uh, now on, on, on showing a film that is called um, the, uh, the Greeks of Egypt. Um, many of you will not know that until the 1940s, uh, Egypt was home to about uh, more than 600,000 Greeks who had uh, who had escaped uh, Greece uh, during the Second World War, and they found uh, a home in Egypt, and they lived there, especially in Alexandria, uh, on the coast. And um, the same with the Italians. The Italians uh, came to Egypt uh, around 1860, 1870, mm -hmm. and they again established a huge community. They they were a little bit bigger than the Greeks, and so. Again, one of the things we are trying to show and, and trying to, to establish, and also, and it is not without uh, a, a selfish reasons, uh, reason, because when you now see all the um, immigrants coming to Europe, um, they, they end up in Greece and Italy to start mm -hmm. with. And um, you might be um, following the debate that is happening now between Italy and Germany, where they will, whether they would allow the um, the immigrants uh, on the uh, on the uh, German ships to to land in Italy, or whether they will be allowed here in Germany, and so um, what is happening now is only one stage in a long history, a history when Italians themselves had to actually take boats and come to the south of the Mediterranean to find food, to find jobs and they actually lived there. So one is perhaps reminded that um, there are ebbs and flows in life, and one should not, um, as we were talking earlier, take things really for granted that they will remain as they are and as you see them. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so the final question. Egypt has multiple world-renowned monuments and a rich history. The field of cultural diplomacy has been highlighted and exemplified by a number of world-renowned monuments and sculptures, which physically symbolise for many people around the world cultural diplomacy at its best. These monuments have deep significance for the cultures that created them, the cultures that received them, as well as the many cultures around the world that experience and share in their importance and significance. Do you agree with the above-mentioned statement and why? Does it help your diplomatic work and are there any examples that you could give us? Please. We are very, you know, um, grateful and, 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 and very privileged to be um, sons of daughters of, of, of such a great civilization as, uh, as the ones we've had in Egypt. Not just ancient Egypt, but also um, all subsequent civilizations. Um, and so there is really a lot that we can, uh, we can share with the world and uh, we are very grateful that this is this is happening and what it does it also gives it puts a little bit of a, a burden puts a little bit of a responsibility on us uh, to try to, to to do the best for these monuments in the first place and um, you always dream of, of the splendor of, 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 of those who, who came before you and, and you say okay, are we living up to that standard or not are we living to that expectation or not and so, in the life of an, of an ambassador, this is an added uh, challenge uh, when the bar is, is set so very high. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to visit sure. us here today. We're looking forward to continuing. And uh, in terms of also what you were saying earlier, tourism and cultural diplomacy, I also think that tourism can be an excellent way to really support cultural diplomacy. And as you were saying, to help complete the picture. Uh, many may not know much about Egypt or they may have misinformation. And I think that's really the, the benefit of something such as tourism and cultural diplomacy. So one thing to keep in mind on your calendar, for the ITB, we always do a conference called the Berlin Economic Forum, parallel to the ITB. So that could be another opportunity if your Minister of Tourism were to come, perhaps 
so we could also do something. Yeah, so anyway, with pleasure. We look forward, inshallah, to much collaboration with the embassy. Okay. And thank you again very much for, thank for coming. Thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.